Let's get started. Uh, so, hi, I'm Joey. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, in this talk, we are going to take a look at something that I've been doing a lot of refactoring on, which is the bootstrap of no core. Um, so uh, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Joey. Uh, I work on the compiler team at Galia. I am on the Node Technical Steering Committee, uh, and I'm a VA committer. So in the past year, I've been working on the Startup Performance Initiative in Node, uh, which involves a lot of work related to the bootstrap of Node Core. Uh, you can find me on GitHub or Twitter via the handle Joey Chang. Um, so enough about me. Let's talk about Node. So uh, this is the process model of Node and also the goal of the bootstrap process. So in a Node process, you usually have one main Node instance running on the main thread, uh, which includes an inspector agent, uh, a VA context, a VA isolate, uh, a libv event loop, and a Node environment. So don't worry about all those lingos. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, we'll get to them later. Uh, there is also a SIG user1 watchdog thread for handling the signal that users send to Node to make the inspector start listening on the port. Uh, there are also one thread pool for V8 uh, and its test schedule thread, uh, and one thread pool for libv to serve as synchronous file system operations. So starting from Node 10, you can spawn worker instances in addition to the main instance in one node process. Uh, and this is what spawning a worker looks like. We basically just create a new thread uh, with the worker instance inside and share all of the threads in the process. So compared to that, uh, spawning a child process is more expensive because we need to set up more stuff. Okay. So here is an overview of the no bootstrap, pro uh, bootstrap process. We'll talk about these steps uh, one by one. So first, we need to do a few setups that should only be done once per process. Uh, this includes setting up the signal handlers, uh, parsing the command line arguments from strings to plus structures, and initializing the dependencies such as ICU for internationalization support and OpenSSL for crypto. Uh, then we'll need to initialize the V8 platform, uh, which includes a task scheduler and thread that we can use to compile JavaScript or run garbage collection. Um, and when initializing the main instance, first uh, we initialize the libuv event loop on the main thread, but we'll only add handles to it later when we initialize the environment. So the main instance simply use the default libuv event loop. And after the process and one default event loop has been initialized, next we'll move on to set up the VA isolate for the main instance. Uh, so VA isolates are the instances of the VA JavaScript engine. Uh, it encapsulates, for example, a JavaScript heap, uh, a microtask queue for the promises, uh, and pending exceptions, and so on. So to set up the VA isolate, we will first configure the resource constraints, um, including how much memory this VA engine instance can use. Uh, we'll also create an array buffer allocator that uh, is in charge of allocating external memory for buffers and other typed arrays. Then VA will deserialize the isolate from an isolate snapshot. Uh, we'll cover snapshots later. Uh, then we'll set up several per isolate callbacks in C++, but most of them are not ready to be called at this point because they will have to work with JavaScript callbacks initialized later. Uh, so these include uh, the garbage collection callbacks, uh, uncalled exception listeners, uh, promise rejection callbacks, etc. And after the VA isolate is initialized, Node then starts to initialize the VA context. So uh, a VA context is a sandboxed execution context that encapsulates JavaScript built-ins, uh, aka prime modules, uh, including global this, array, uh, object, and others. So when you call va, vm.createContext, 
from the user end, um, later after um, the node has been bootstrapped. This is what the return result includes. Uh, it's a new context with a different set of buildings. So when user creates um, VN context sometime later after the bootstrap, we only add one more context to the instance without doing any further uh, setups. So what does Node do to initialize this context? Uh, it, it creates an immutable copy uh, for the my primordials uh, so that internals can use them and won't be affected when users monkey patch these buildings. Um, it also initializes the John exception for web APIs to use. Uh, it's somewhat funny that Node has done exceptions when there is no DOM. Uh, but this is done to be spec compliant. So uh, each node instance has a main context where most of the JavaScript is, um, is executed in, but it can also contain context created with the VM module. Uh, the main context contains a pointer to its associated node environment. Uh, this will be assigned later when the environment is created. Um, VN contacts, on the other hand, do not have this pointer, and they are not bootstrap further beyond this point. So contacts can be deserialized from the VA st uh, startup snapshot. Uh, note that this is different from the heap snapshots that you use for memory debugging. Uh, before we integrated VA startup snapshot into Node, we had to run a few contacts uh, per context scripts in order to initialize these uh, primordials and the down exception. And now we run the scripts at a build time and serialize the context after initializing uh, has been done. And uh, we snitch, uh, serialize the context into a blob that gets embedded into the node executable. Then um, at runtime, instead of executing the scripts, we directly deserialize the result of the previous execution uh, into one context, which speeds up the bootstrap. After the node context is initialized, we'll move on to initialize the entire node environment. So a node environment encapsulates a node instance. Uh, it is associated with one VA inspector agent one main VA context, uh, one VA isolate, and one libvv invalid loop. To initialize the environment, we first initialize the components that are independent of runtime states. So this includes um, the internal JavaScript module and simple binding loaders, um, the process object and other globals, and JavaScript callbacks that uh, simple hooks invoke which will be in charge of invoking user-provided callbacks later. So these objects and functions, when used by the users, may depend on runtime states, but the creation of them is runtime independent, and that's why we're doing this at this point. So to bootstrap itself with JavaScript, no needs to create an internal loader system to load CPUs bindings and internal JavaScript modules. Uh, the CPUs bindings are looked up from a linked list with linear search, um, while the native JavaScript modules provided through the internal version of require are looked up from the map. So no recently integrated uh, VA co-cache to speed up the compilation of internal JavaScript modules. So before the integration, we needed to parse and compile the source code of these modules at runtime uh, before executing them to create native modules. Now we compile them at build time and deserialize the compilation data, uh, which is embedded into the executable. At runtime, we can directly deserialize the compilation data and execute the uh, JavaScript to create these internal modules. This speeds up the bootstrap about uh, 40 to 60 percent since parsing and compilation used to take up a lot of time during bootstrap. Uh, after we have an internal loader system set up, Node can start initializing the globals. 
uh, which are implemented in internal JavaScript with access to internal C++ bindings. Uh, these globals, globals are then attached to the global object or the process object. Uh, in Node, the global object is now a legacy alias to the ECMAScript stage four global this project uh, object. Um, so this is a very simplified version of the code executed to set up the globals. Um, we usually use the internal require to load an, the implementation of um, something internal, uh, run some setups to get a JavaScript function or object, and assign them to either the process object or the global object. Other than the globals, we also need to initialize several hooks when setting up the environment. This includes, for example, uh, process next tick, which need to invoke queued callbacks when its incorporations are done. Um, so during bootstrap, we need to create the tick queue uh, and the tick callback and store the tick callback in the environment so that it can be called later. Uh, we initializing the runtime independent states. No ticks should be added to the tick queue. Uh, we are just initializing the machinery to process the tick queue. And after the runtime independent uh, components are initialized, we then move on to set up the event loop. Um, at this point, we need to initialize a few handles. Uh, some are activated immediately. Some are activated on demand later. Uh, we only initialize a fixed number of handles during bootstrap. Uh, more handles, specifically the ones for I.O., are added on demand, on demand later. Um, so the libuv event loop has many different phases in each iteration. And this is what roughly uh, what it looks like. So at Bootstrap, we'll initialize one timer handle for set amount and set interval, uh, one idle handle for set immediate, one prepare handle for idle for the idle notification for dash dash prof, um, and one check handle for dash dash prof, and another for uh, set immediate to pair with other handles to work. Uh, so after the event loop is fully initialized, we then initialize the VA inspector, uh, which is used for JavaScript debugging. Uh, this includes initializing the inspector agent, which is done even when the inspector is not active. Okay, and we'll spawn a SigUser1 watchdog thread that wakes up and asks the main thread to start listening on the inspector port when user sends a sig user one to the process. This is only done for the main node instances um, and not done for workers. So if the user passes, uh, for example, dash dash inspect uh, break, dash dash CPU prof or dash dash heap prof when launching the instance, we'll also immediately create more threads for either listening on the inspect port or for profiling. After the inspector is initialized, we then continue initializing components that depend on runtime states. Uh, at this point, we will need to handle various runtime uh, configurations, including command line flags and environment variables. This phase is also called pre-execution. For example, this is what the initialization of dash dash no warnings uh, look alike. If the user asks no not to write warnings to uh, std error, we don't install the warning listener that does this. If the user does not configure no to um, stop doing this, we'll install the listener. Um, other than initializations, uh, other initializations, initializations done during the pre-execution phase include um, setting up IPC channels for clusters and child processes, uh, initializing the user land module loaders, including both the CJS module loader and the ESM loader. So only after this point, any user land module can be executed. Uh, and we'll right after that, we'll also load any preloaded module specified with dash dash require. Um, 
after the pre-execution is done, the node environment is ready and we can start the execution. So at this point, we'll choose a main script according to the command line flags um, and run it to start the execution. These scripts are all located under lib internal main in the node repository and compiled into the binary at build time. So for example, if the user passes a file name to node from the command line as the entry point, we'll load a main script um, that detects the type of the entry point and load it with either the uh, CJS or ESM loader. If the instance launched is a worker instance, uh, we'll load a different main script that set up various listeners on the message port and start listening. So when the worker thread receives the scripts from the port, it will compile it and start execution from there. Um, and after the main script is run, we'll kick off the event loop and run it until nothing keeps it open. Uh, the libuv thread pool will be created if any asynchronous file system operation is used. So um, a quick summary of what we covered in this talk. Uh, to initialize a node process from scratch, we first run uh, per process setups and then set up a VA isolate, uh, a VA context, and the node environment. Uh, the majority of the work is done in the environment setup, which includes initializing the runtime independent states, uh, the VA loop, the V8 inspector, and handling runtime dependent configurations. Uh, we then select and execute the main script and start the event loop. Okay. So uh, as mentioned earlier, we now um, have integrated the VA startup snapshot into Node. But at the moment, the snapshot we have only includes the contact setups. We're currently working on including the runtime independent part of the environment bootstrap into the step, uh, startup snapshot to speed up the bootstrap further. So this is currently the focus of the startup performance initiative. Uh, you can check out the link if you want to know more. Okay, thank you. <laughs>